Ticker and the Chief Mourner. That was Scrooge. Old Marley was as dead as a doornail. However dead that's supposed to be. <laughs> Scrooge knew he was dead? Oh, how could it be otherwise? Scrooge and Marley were partners for many years. Scrooge never pointed out old Marley's name. There it stood above the counting house door, Scrooge and Marley. People new to the business sometimes called Scrooge, Scrooge, and they sometimes called him Marley. He answered the both names. It was all the same to him. To the mean, cheap, impatient, cantankerous, money growing, getting busy, back to her, this is growing, found out, lost it, Scrooge. He could sum it up in one small word. This world is a hammer. I've said it all my life and I will say it to my grave. Hammer. Yes, it's a hammer. It's nothing but a trick they play on every foolish name. I made my way alone with no one's help or no one's aid. I'm proud of what I've done, of the money that I've made. It's a crime to take it from me in the name of charity. I ask for help from no one. They should do the same for me. Humbug! Christmas is a humbug! Those grinning, singing faces hide the minds of simple fools. Humbug! Yes, it's a humbug! They wish something out of nothing. Don't they understand the rules? The right and proper action of a man who would be wise is to call the world's attention to this holiday of lies. We're not made to share our bounty with the lazy and the lame. If they fail to make their fortunes, they just themselves to blame. Why, dear Mrs. Scrooge, would you be one to borrow one of the pretty Christmas flowers this fine Christmas Eve, sir? Fine Christmas Eve? There's nothing fine about it, as near as I can tell, madam. Typical London December day. Death, dreary, and crap. Why, then, one of these beautiful rooms would uh, take away the jury list, don't you think? Wait a minute. I know you. You borrowed five quid from our firm last month, did you not? Yes, here it is. Betsy Littleton, payable last week, I see. Oh, mercy, Mr. Scrooge. I don't have your money, and not likely to for a few more days. Don't have it. But, madam, it is due. There'll be a fine for late payment, a substantial fine. Oh, mercy, sir. It's Christmas Eve, sir. Mercy! That is just a humbug. Something that the weak request will ask to pay their debt. Humbug! I must cry, humbug! You'll pay me what you owe me, don't you think I will forget? Oh, sir! Mercy is a humbug, kindness is one too. Patience is a humbug, forgiveness will not do. Another humbug. 
I'm sick of alibis. You'll pay me if you're wise. I dare say that most of you owe me your livelihood. And each and every one will never pay me what they should. You'll blame it on the season with the rest too many men. But I'm sick and tired of hearing that my deadlines must extend. Mr. Scrooge, please have my seat. Ah. Christmas cheer is wasted on my soul. This Christmas time is getting very old. <laughs> the gifts, the feasting, the silly Yuletide love, the going to the party with a whistle and a knob. I've had my fill of Christmas with its carols and its mirth. A hunger on your Christmas from now on and henceforth. It's all. Good afternoon! A Merry Christmas to you, 
Bob Cratchit, as well to you, Mr. Hollister, and a prosperous new year. And here's another fellow, my clerk, with 15 shillings a week, a wife and family talking about a merry Christmas. If I hear much more of this humbug, I'll retire to bed. You'll want all day tomorrow, I suppose. If it's quite convenient, sir. It is not convenient, sir. Nor is it fair. If I was to short your pay, a single pence you'd think yourself ill-used. But you do not think me ill-used when I pay a whole day wa day's wages for no work. But it's only once a year, Mr. Scrooge. A poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. I suppose you must have the whole day. Therefore, be here all the earlier the next morning. You may count on it, Mr. Scrooge. Here are your wages. A whole day's wages, mind you. Thank you, Mr. Scrooge. And a Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Thank you. 
You know, children, what say we go down to Father and Gay's butcher shop and pick out his biggest bird for our feast tomorrow? Yes. <laughs> Oh, I've never met 
nastier war as ever drew a breath. <laughs> He's about as pleasant as warm over death. If you want to see how mean a man can be, look anywhere you wish. There's no meaner man than he. Just require love and dream, man. That is. 
Is that the home you mentioned, Chick? <laughs> it is. I think I'd rather not. Expect the first when the bell tolls one! Oh, couldn't they take a all at once and have it over with, Jacob? Expect the second on the morrow night upon the last stroke of two, and the third the following night upon the last stroke of three! Oh, look for me no more, Ebenezer Scrooge, and for your own sake, remember what has passed. No, no, Jacob, please, please don't leave me. There must be more! Remember! Remember what you have said!
One child. Your nephew, Fred. Yes. I'll try to stand here, Mrs. Scrooge. Where do we go now? A place you recognize as easily as you did this place. Come.
Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh, Belle, when others say my name, it falls harsh on my ear. But when you say it, it sounds, well, it sounds like a bell ringing. You know, Belle, we've known each other for well over two years now. From the first day you came to Clark for all the wedding. And hardly a day has gone by that we've not spent in each other's company. Hardly a day. Except for those days when you chose to work until all hours. Chose? Belle, I had to work those hours. How else could I become Fezziwig's chief clerk? Certainly not by frittering away with my time like that Dick Wilkins. I mean to be successful. Dick is your best friend. And I love him dearly, but his head is not set on business. There is hard to set on Felicia. Dick never wears a man for business. Certainly not as keen as you. I do believe they will be married for summer. Yes. I suppose you're right. Quite a step for them, eh? Oh, come! Come, let's have a part! I mean, a dance thing! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
the clay touch be forgot and never brought to mind. Should all the clay touch be forgot in days of old anxiety? In days of old anxiety, my dear, in days of old anxiety, we'll raise a cup of kindness yet. ever sought release? There's not one thing of greater worth, there's no one to
She died of fever. You never saw her again. No. But as I said before, these are the shadows of the things that have been. That they were what they were. Do not blame me. <laughs> you fool. Why did you ever let her go?
everyone deserves a bit of Christmas cheer. And happy Christmas to you, Betsy Nagara. Oh, and you as well, Mr. Father Gay. Just so you know, I'll be on a modest piece later this evening if you get it for me. You don't mind if I do. I'd even bring a little lamb along if you'd like. Oh, I'd love that. I would. You. you. <laughs> Why then, you're welcome to share. And play it, my friends. Peculiar flavor that you sprinkle from your torch? That is my own. <laughs> Would it apply to um, to any kind of person? To any kindly person, but to a poor one the most. The way to a poor one most? Because the poor need it the most. Come, let us leave this feast of plenty and visit where the feast is meager, though still full of joy. Let us visit the home of your club, Bob Cut. Yeah, boy. 
seem to be in extraordinarily good spirits. Considering how little they have, perhaps their happiness doesn't depend upon possessions. Time for a Christmas toast. A was over all. I give you the founder of our feast, Mr. Scrooge. The founder of the feast, indeed. I wish I had him here. I give him a piece of my mind to feast upon. I hope he has a good appetite for it. Uh -huh. My dear, the children. She are for Christmas Day. It would only be Christmas Day when one drinks the hope of such an odious, stingy, hard, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. Uh -huh. You know he is, Robert. Nobody knows it better than you do. My dear. <coughs> Oh, very well. I'll drink his health for your sake, Bob, and for the day, but not for his. Long life to him, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He'll be very merry and very happy, I have no doubt. Now, everyone go and wash for dinner. Clean hands for our Christmas feast. Yes, definitely. You should have seen him at church today. He wanted help others to their seats. He hardly think he needed any help himself. He'll need no crutch when he is grown. He'll learn to do some more. And someday he'll be leaving. He grows stronger every day.
as pleasant as he might be, but his offences carry their own punishment, and I have nothing to say against him. I'm sure he's very rich. At least, Fred always tells me so. Oh, 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 that's my dear. His wealth is of no use to him. He won't do any good with it. He won't make himself comfortable with it. He hasn't given the satisfaction of thinking you'll <laughs> benefit any of us with it. I have no patience with him. Oh, I have. I feel sorry for him. I, I couldn't be angry with him if I tried. Now, who suffers most by his ill wins? Hmm? Himself. If he takes it upon himself to go up to slightest and not to come to dine with us, what's the consequence? Well, he didn't lose much of a dinner. I am very glad to hear it because I have not much faith in young housekeepers. Uh, don't you agree, Topper? Topper! Hey! I said I haven't much faith in young housekeepers, don't you agree? Well, they bachelors, a wretched outcast, and while well, I am a bachelor, at least for the moment, I <laughs> feel I have no right to express myself on the issue. <laughs> <laughs> I was only going to say that <laughs> I was only going to say that the consequence of his taking a dislike to us and not making merry with us is that he loses a bunch of pleasant moments, which can do him no harm. I mean to give him the same chance every year, whether he likes it or not. He may rail against Christmas until he dies, but he can't help making better of it if he finds me going there year after year and saying, Uncle Scrooge, how are you? I think I shook him a bit yesterday. <laughs> Indeed he did not. <laughs> Though I begin to wish he had a little. I know, he has played my man's luck. Ah, excellent oh. suggestion. Come on, Topper, old chap. Uh, <laughs> Spirit, I 
see something strange. Oh, man! Look upon them. Oh, spirit, are they yours? They are man's. Yet they cling to me. This boy is ignorance. This girl is want. Beware the wolf. But most of all, beware this boy. For on his throne, I see written the doom of mankind. Well, have they none to, to care for them, to, to offer them refuge? Oh, they are no prisons! Are there no workhouses? No prisons? No workhouses? No. No, 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 I didn't mean it. No, I, 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 I did not mean it. I swear I did not! of the ghost of Christmas yet to come. And are you to show me the shadows of things that have not yet happened in, and yet will happen in the time before us? Ghost of the future. I fear you more than any specter I have seen. And yet, as I know, your purpose is to do me good. And as I hope to live, to be a better man, I am... I am prepared to follow you. And do so with a thankful heart. Will you speak to me? Lead on, spirit. The night is waning fast, and it is precious time to me, I know. Lead on! No, I don't know much about the tidal way. I only know he's dead. Why did he die last night, I believe? What was the matter with him? I thought he'd never die. Good news. Hey, what has he done with his money? <laughs> I've heard he left it to his copy of the house, but I only know he has given it to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's likely to be a cheap funeral. For upon my life, I don't know anybody who can go to it. I don't mind going. Lunch is provided. <laughs> a man's gonna eat it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, whomever it was, they knew. It seems they might have mourned him with some semblance of feeling. What must a man have done to deserve such remorseless regard? A dear old fellow, if we had not met here without meeting it. <laughs> we couldn't have met in a better place. Come closer, come closer. Every man has the right to take care of himself, Miss Silva. He always did. That's true indeed. No man more so. And who's the most lost of a few things like these? Not a dead man on the phone. Oh, indeed. If he wanted to keep his things after he was dead, the wicked old screw, why wasn't he more generous in his lifetime? If he had been, he'd have somebody looking after him when he was struck by death instead of lying there. Gasta got his last breath all alone by himself. <laughs> it's the truest word that ever was spoke. It's a judgment on him. I was ever there, Mr. Would have been true if I couldn't lay my hands on him for this. He had quite a lot of stuff. That old man, he had a lot of stuff. Even though he never wasted one red sand. When a man is so wisely and gruff, his love can never make you content. What a 
lot of stuff, quite a lot of stuff, more than a mortal man should be. Quite a lot of stuff, still it's not enough, when a man is driven only by his greed. But that ain't yours, is it, Jack? We used to sew up for lunch for a bit. We did. We did that I was what name that. And we need this on us. <laughs> Dear Joe, I took these things from him when I laid him in his grave. Now, Joe, how much you gonna give me for these trinkets that I saved? A pair of pins of pencil case, shiny buttons from his feet, and a ring of no great value. But Joe, ever find out? Here's your account, and you ain't much. But I wouldn't give another hint if I was born for a holding back. You don't tell me who's me. Me next, Jack. Me next. Why does this go up? Well? Display the results of your clever marketing. Look, Joe. Him so it was no trouble. 
No trouble. Here's your father at the door. You were today, my mother. Yes, I wish you could have seen it. But it's only good to see how green a place it is. Just see it often. What crowns can we walk there on a Sunday? Something informs me that our parting moment is at hand. But please, I beg of you, before you go, show me what I may be in the days to come. Answer these questions I must ask. Are you 
shadows of the things that must be. Or may the future differ from the horror it forecasts. The man must walk the path his actions paved. But if he's changed, the end must change as well. I swear I've changed, my soul can now be saved. Spirit, save me from this tortured hell. No, no, my name upon the stone must be erased. Your lessons have redeemed me, this I know. There must exist the slightest of grace, that down this road I shall never go. Hear me, I am not who I have been. I'll take to heart each lesson oh so well. See me. I am not who I was then. Spirit, save me from this tortured hell. Spirit, speak and say I will be well. Spirit, say what I must do. Please tell, please tell me, please tell me, please tell. Turkey he had hanging up there. Well, the winner's biggest name. <laughs> what a 
delightful boy. It's just a pleasure to talk to him. <laughs> yes, yes, my buckle, that's the very one. Why, it's hanging there now. Is it? Uh, well, uh, oh, uh, go and buy it. Oh, go on. No, 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 I'm in earnest. Go and uh, buy it and tell Father Inge to, uh, to, to bring it here. That I may give him directions where to take it. No, no, come back with the man, I'll, I'll give you a shilling. Come back with him in less than five minutes, I'll give you half a crown. Right, oh, well, no. <laughs> hurry, 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 lad, fine, fine, lad. <laughs>
I am uh, very sorry I was rude yesterday. Uh, it was very kind of you to call on me. Mr. Scrooge! Yes, yes, that is my name, and I know it, it is not pleasant to your ears. Please allow me to beg your pardon, and will you have the goodness to accept ah. this gift? Bless me! Are you serious? It's a debt that I have accrued, so not a farthing less. I assure you, it includes all the years I've failed to donate. Please, accept it. Will you do me that favor? Mrs. Scrooge, I don't know what to say. Say only that you will come and visit me tomorrow. Will you come and see me? We will! Thank you. Thank you fifty times in some much obliged. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Fred! My nephew, Fred! How delightful to see you, and on today of all days! Scrooge? <laughs> very same, my boy. Oh, and unless I'm very sadly mistaken, this must be your lovely wife. Why, yes. <laughs> yes, it is, Uncle. Uh, Uncle Scrooge, may, may I present to you Lydia? I'm so happy to meet you, Mr. Scrooge. <laughs> Call me Uncle, my dear. Yes. It would do this old heart good to hear you say it. Well, then, Uncle Scrooge, they just told me a great deal about you. Oh, my, has he? Why, just last night. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can imagine exactly what Fred has been saying about me. <laughs> and he was right. Oh, last night. But, Fred, I assure you, all that has changed. If I'm... Uh, if I may be so bold as to uh, invite myself to your home for Christmas dinner. Oh, Scrooge, you said that... Uh, did, did, you, you did ask me to come, did you not? Why, well, yes, I did. I would be overjoyed to have you welcome. We'll have some games to play afterwards. And dancing. Oh, I love them both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh uh, wait a minute. Uh, yonder comes my clerk, Bob Cratchit and his family. Would you buy the moment before we go? Uh, I have a small um, joke I'd like to play on Bob. I, I, uh, 
am a man of business. And today I am in the business of making amends. And I owe you the greatest debt of all. Therefore, my fine fellow, I am going to double. No. Triple your salary beginning next week. Mr. Scrooge! And don't bother coming in before next week. The firm of Scrooge and Marley will be taking a Christmas holiday until then. And shall be every year from now on! Mr. Scrooge, would you like to come with us? Can I come with you? Uh, <laughs> Well, yes, 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 Tim, I would like that very much, if you'll have me. Uh, oh, uh, Fred. Until this evening, then. Look forward to it with pleasure, Uncle. We are all, each and every one of us, so very, very blessed. <laughs> Christmas is with us once again.